in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of the Top 10 Show. I am John Roca. I am Matt Nost. How are you, sir? I am good. I am uh, recovering and from a lot of things, but I am excited to talk about the topic today because you had you had suggested you said like we are getting too morose with some yeah. of these topics we've had recently. So especially after last week's when our schedules just it got to the point where we're like oh, oh Jesus yeah this sucks and we only have it by the time like we just kind of started thinking about the next week yeah. Because sometimes you get busy and you're like, oh, shit, that's two days away or something. And like, right. I have to come up with a brain. Oh, yeah. And just kind of barreled right through it. So we're like, you know what? Why don't we take a step back, step back and relook at our list and be mm-hmm. like, what do we got coming up? Maybe we can change something, like spice it up a little bit. Yeah. Because it was a lot of the same themes over and over and over and be like, this is getting pretty dark every week. We're getting depressing. Yeah. Well, yeah. The world is changing. You know, it's not it's, it's not happy go lucky anymore. You know, there's a lot of shit going well, on. The so. world's always been like that. I guess so. Uh, this is just the newest okay. version. Okay. It has. <laughs> All it right. has. People have been treating each other terribly since, you know, before recorded history. Uh, true. You have to assume. Yeah. I mean, think about like the number, like uh, the, if you go back X number of centuries, Genocides on a level that we couldn't even fathom happened every seventy five hundred years. Like some other part of the world has this, and you're yeah. like, you go back three, four, five, six, seven hundred years. Like we we do this a lot. <laughs> it's just different forms of the same exact thing, and it sucks. Right. We're just programmed to do that to each other. Here we are trying to be lighter, but uh, you know we just Yay! can't help ourselves. We can't yeah exactly then the world just creeps back in you son of a bitch yeah um uh yeah i mean new york i'm coming up in new york comic con and uh recovering from being from being sick it was a rough way i got i got that what they talk about that comic con crud shit i've never done it i had gotten sick after a comic con and this is the first time uh so who knows what it was was it being on the floor was it shaking hands at the meet and greet was it all that kind of stuff it was the Who several knows? thousand people that you came into contact with, and eventually there was a virus in there that was strong enough to it was. It get your immune down. system. It yeah, broke me down. But I got to do uh, my second stand-up set with Ellis. How'd it um, go? The second time felt more comfortable, and I was more nervous before I walked out there and then did it, and I did nine minutes instead of seven this time, which was nice, but I lost myself in the middle yeah. and then found my way back near the end, so... Uh, I realized that I just need to have five topics that I can talk about and I may not even get to two of them or, or maybe get barely two of them in a five to ten minute set. And so now I realize no, because I thought I'd bring all my notes out. And I was going to look at all my notes and shit while I was doing it. Mm-hmm. But eventually you don't know what your kinda, style is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. You know, so. Some guys do that. Yeah. Some guys just workshop a bit on stage. Yeah. I do a little bit of both, but you kind of figure out whatever works for you yeah. and just kind of. Basically, do you, do you understand why you were more nervous the second time? Yes, because I had expectations that I, mm-hmm. I wanted to match what I Precisely. did the first time. Yeah. And so I was afraid that I would fall flat on my face or or crash. Mm-hmm. Like people say, like, what do they call You tank or whatever it is. You don't, like, you bomb. You I bomb. Was, I was afraid I was going to bomb like crazy because all a lot of the a lot of the crowd there were Schmoes fans or, mm-hmm. or Schmodown fans or Collider fans. There's, it's almost so, bomb proof on yeah, some level. It is. almost. It is. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Those no, no. shows are awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are, they're there. They know you. Right. So you have a built-in rapport with them. So yeah. you can get away with and you can have fun and explore topics and ideas that you wouldn't with a regular because you're like, I don't know your sensibility. Right. But if you're already there and going, I am a fan of yours, be like, okay, yeah. that's fine. Then we can play. We can have a little volleyball. Yeah, but it was nice to hear the other comics who Ellis had brought uh, to come wa- or to uh, perform liked what I did or very complimentary, but they also were very real about the... Uh, uh, 
next things I need to do to be able to get on stage. Like they were real about breaking down the set, which I appreciated because it's good to understand the machinations of this whole thing as I'm doing it. So, yeah, because I haven't taken a fucking class. I just walked out on stage Don't. and started talking stuff. So, yeah. you know, I, I've just seen so much of it. That you pick you can pick it up mm-hmm. to a degree if you have any kind of ability to do it. After that, it becomes about honing and crafting and understanding w- what it takes and the technique and things like that. And like you said, finding your own voice on stage, like what works for you and what topics work for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It so takes most people years. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you have a right. better sense of yourself because you start, you're, you know, doing this now as yeah. someone that's been more introspective for a long, lot longer. Right. And I think ultimately that is what translates as the funniest is when you can break down a topic and you just like, these are the random things I think about this. Yeah. yeah. And... You'll figure out eventually. It's like, okay, well, I need to relate myself. Like, I know how it's, it's, it's innate. Yeah. I don't think about it. It's just like, oh, I, when I, okay, when I tell this joke, I'll do it like this. Right. And it'll set me up for the, you know, wording into the next and yeah. bing, bing. The transitions. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, but at the same time, like, sometimes I don't want, I want abrupt stops. Yeah. I want you to recognize that that was a chunk. Right. They, you, hey, look, trust me, when you, I, I, I've done sets for purely specific reasons going up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know how many countless times. Let me push myself and see if I can do this. Okay, I'm not doing any of my act. I'll try and figure out a story that I will tell on stage. Right. So you fail, yeah. but you, ha- you have to push yourself and try. Yeah. And be like, oh, can I do this? Right. When I started doing crowd work at first, I was like, oh, I don't know. And then eventually you figure out a couple hooks and you're like, this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Is, I can yeah. do this easy. Yeah, but it's just like you have to allow yourself to fail and fail at everything you can conceive of. Well, I think that's what Mark did. Mark wrote like 45 minutes of new material. Okay. It was amazing. He just did it. He just did it like he had been working on it all weekend in New York and then before. And then he just walked out on stage and did 45 minutes, just all almost all new. And I was like, Jesus Christ, what balls that is to, to, to do it that way. And he killed. He slayed. So it was the like best amazing. Is- so I could I could watch Mark and tell you, okay, this is the transition to the oh, next joke. Yeah. Here, all right, here comes the punch. Just because he has just like all oh, good comics. Right. He has a pattern and a style and it's who he is. Yeah. But I've seen him perform enough times to be like, Okay, I know your style. Mm-hmm. I can mimic your style and be like, This is, you know, how he does this. Right. Uh, yeah, but I, I fully believe he could easily do that. It's amazing. And yeah. he, he does the build. Like that's the thing that I found interesting. Like he builds to the big joke. Like oh, yeah. he has that pattern, right? Close. Some people just hit, 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 and they move on to the next thing. He is building slow, lighter mm-hmm. jokes, lighter jokes, lighter, 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 and then bam. And you're just like, oh shit. And he's just taking you on this whole journey. And then he's on to the next chunk of his act. So it was it was just fascinating to watch, you know, mm-hmm. it, it live and, and watch all the different comics that were there doing their styles. So whatever. It was just a blast. It was, it was so good to do it. I'm I'll, glad you had fun. Thank you. And I will be, I will actually be trying to do it a little bit more in smaller stages and whatever here. And, and I know I said that before, but I'm actually now after this, I'm like, okay, I'm understanding a little bit more. And so I want to try more and, and see what happens and try a stage where there isn't any schmoes fans or anything like that and see if I legitimately have a chance to make people laugh. So who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, how have you been? Uh, no complaints. Yeah, not a complaint in the world. Everything good. Everything is uh, is rosy in my world. Okay. I haven't been sick, so good. The nice thing is, anytime I know somebody that's sick, I always take a second and breathe deeply through my nose and be like, <laughs> "Don't forget this moment." Because every time I'm sick, I'm like, oh, I always take it for granted. Yeah. When you're there for when, because I I get you know usually that's where it attacks first and it stays the entire time. Right. That's just part of my curse. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's how I get a cold. Fair enough. Uh, I wouldn't have come over if I was contagious. Well, you still are technically, but no. I, I thought it was only like one day afterwards, one or two days afterwards. No, no, no. The the right. level of contagion goes down as the virus gets weaker and weaker. Okay, but you're still you're still transmitting disease out into the world. How dare you, sir? You've already beaten it, so it's kind of it's a battered dog. It's fine. <laughs> I have beaten it. It's a good way. But to put it. whoever saw you the next day. You know what I mean? They, they yeah. that, that virus still thought it had a shot. Be like, I lost this round. And like after, as it, it it slowly gets easier and easier. Yeah, yeah. I, I went home twice this week and then didn't come in one time. Like I went home halfway through the day twice because it just was so exhausting. Yeah. And I th- kept thinking I could beat it, and then I had to take that whole day off to just recover. You know. So all right, we'll so see what happens. I'm all right now. Well, let's get into the list. Let's y'all. do it. Let's do it. Uh, we're doing this one, so we're doing. Uh, are we saying real life heroes? Yeah, everyday best, heroes. Best movies with real life heroes. Okay. Yeah. Because this was hard. It was really hard. I have a list because you were like, okay, how do I define a hero? Yeah. And it's case by case, and eventually, like, I, I'm not kidding. I have a list. Uh, I don't know. I would guess thirty to thirty five names. Wow. And then, Just how like, you, but how do you define? That's the question. Right. And so that's what makes this is a fantastic or fascinating list because it's like. 
how do you define hero? Is it saving one person or is it saving a bunch of people? And is it, do you go epic? Do you go historical? Do you go, uh, uh, you know, modern? Like, what do you do? So my list is all over the place. But yep. I'm satisfied with my list. So is mine. I did not have 35, though. That's amazing that you had 35. Well, it just went so you're like, well, I guess I could count that. Yeah. And this is because of the human spirit. This person is a hero to us, is uh, something to aspire to right. and to fixate upon and, and, you know, raises humanity. That's saving people in a different way. Right, right. So you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> so you're like, start adding those movies. And then you're like, all right, so what if this ideal? Right. <sighs> yeah. So, so. <laughs> I felt like I, I don't know. It's weird. So it's it's a case by case scenario. Yeah. Okay. And that's how it is. So once, I love it. Let's once go. John and I set a topic, there we go. We go our separate ways and create individual <laughs> lists and show back up here. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we have revealed our personal top ten list, we create the shows between the two of us. Wow. Yes, and you know what? I'll find the guy's name. That is a shout out to. I want to say it's Kyle. It should be Kyle because he's like, "Oh, I'm so glad that helped him." Like, Thank you, you tweeted me because I would have forgotten. <laughs> I couldn't remember your name in the moment, uh, and it is not Dan Kyle. Uh, Kyle. It is Kyle. Oh, Kyle, Kyle Harlow. Kyle Harlow. Thank you very much. Well, there we go. So into the show. Let's do it. My number ten. Yes. Is not going to be on your list. Okay. You know. You know and that's perfectly you've, fine. You've had a nasty habit of doing this recently, but yes, go ahead. It's not. It's not a habit, and you'll immediately go. Yes, this is not a matter of taste. This is not a matter of anything. This is a matter of, I wanted to include this movie so people saw it, but it's only technically a movie because it's and uh, and the band played on. The HBO oh, movie. But that's not even a th- it wasn't theatrically released. I know. That's why it's a 10. It's going to get bumped <sighs> off the list. Listen. And that's fine. This, this is not a place for your political motives. To it's not. To TV movies on to make people watch these TV movies. It's an excellent TV movie. And it's HBO <laughs> at a time when that held greater cachet than any network or a bunch of movie theater that's like fair. Uh, studios. Yes. Agreed. HBO, doesn't matter the length, they put out quality <laughs> entertainment. And the band out played on is a quality film. Matthew uh-huh. Modine's the lead. Yes. It's a hero to me because they, you know, they work for the CDC, the yes. Center for Disease Control. Yeah. And it's about the outbreak of AIDS. And they're slowly tracking the story and the amount of bureaucracy that they run into, but also people's preconceptions about gay people yeah. and that this was just a gay cancer and going af- off. And it's heroic to me because... They kept fighting the fight. Yeah, they knew it was the right thing to do, and like the fact that we as observers now get to see that story and understand it, and you know, kind of relive through those characters—not relive, but empathetically understand what they're going through. Yeah, and having to fight and just slap people in the face and be like, "This is the right thing to do," and mm-hmm. you know it, but for political reasons, you're not saying it, or for whatever your belief system is. But this is still a person. Why are we? Why is that person's life devalued? Yeah. in context to another one. Uh, and I like that. It, that is a lifting my ideals, my morals, my pushing me to strive. So it's heroic to me in that sense. And it's also number 10. It's going to be off the list. That's why, <laughs> that's why I put it there. Fine. All right. That's, Julia Roberts is in that one, right? I think she plays a doctor or something in that. No. Julia Roberts sure? is not in the I'm 100% sure. All right. All right. She was in something, some HBO movie where she's a doctor with AIDS stuff. Okay. I feel like I want to look it up now. But what's your number nine? Go right ahead. You look it up, and I'll go ahead and do my number nine. Schmo down. Yeah. But I'll... I, I, if she's in that, I I can't believe I don't remember it. It's all right. Go ahead. It is all right. God damn it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And number nine. So uh, probably another yes. movie that won't make your list. Oh, Jesus. Stop saying that. It's, you can't say it's not a habit if you're saying it every time. Eh, That's just, the definition of a habit. Okay. All right. What's your number nine? I'm not going to fight you. <laughs> uh, nine is uh, Black Hawk Down. It is not on my list. And I struggled with putting it on my list because I have another military one or a couple of military ones on my list. Sure. But Black Hawk Down is a self-contained type situation. So I didn't 100% uh, consider it heroic, although it, they are heroic for saving their own people, so to speak. Or yes. trying to save their own That's people. That's what I was yeah. fixated upon. Which just is, like I respect. The yeah. Eric Bana at the end after he's had no sleep and he's been trying to get these guys out for an entire day, just yeah. comes back, grabs a quick bite at the end of the movie and goes right back to the fight. Yep. And in, in essence saying, this is what they would do for me, so I will do this for them. Yep. I don't need sleep. I will forego, forego that. And that is, it was selfless because that character the entire time was, you know, just there to get in, get out, do the job, and get yep. everybody back home safe. Yep. No need to to have uh, collateral damage, but he is one of 
30 characters that they fixate yeah. upon in that movie. There's so many great actors. Yeah, you got Hartnett, movie. you got uh, Ewan McGregor, yep. Orlando Bloom, uh, Jeremy Piven, Sam Shepard, yep. uh, 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 yeah. Mike, uh, Tom Sizemore. Is Channing Tatum in that? No. No? Okay. What's his name um, that goes on to play uh, uh, Jamie Lann Lannister? He's oh, in it. Oh, Nicholas Coster Waldem. There you go. Wow. Okay. Oh, uh, there's so many others. All right. Damn it. Yeah, there's a shit ton of young actors and older actors. This is a good combination of people. Yeah, it's a nice yeah, mix though. back and forth. Yeah. But it is a very self-contained. Yeah. And I look at it as a hero's perspective uh, just because it is self-contained, but it's what they did to basically get their brothers in arms out of that situation. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty uh, harrowing. Uh, what was going on in Somalia, Mogadishu, and uh, like you, just when they're dragging that one guy that's been killed through the streets, it's like it's horrible to watch yeah. and witness. And so it is a terrible situation. And likes military operations sometimes, the clusterfuck bleeds from the top down, you know, trying to make this whole thing happen because they misunderstood or miscalculated what was going to happen. And then they're stuck in bureaucracy or red well, tape or what we should do or protocol. And it's just frustrating to watch, but it's a damn good movie. Yeah, but it's an enemy that we can't see. Yeah, right. And we're so, in their territory. Exactly. Yeah. And we're operating under the politics of we can't shoot unless we're shot at. Right. And you actually need to see, you know, the shot. Yeah. On some level. Yeah. You can't just fire any which way. Like I heard gunshot from that way. I'm right. sorry. You could take out three civilians and that's just not worth it. Right. And meanwhile, you look like no other person there. So you are just an easy target. It's a thankless job, man. It is. It's, it's beyond a thankless job. It, it's it's the definition of insanity on yeah, some level. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, right. num my number eight. I hope it's on your list. How about that? I change yeah, it up. No, I'm going positive. Move. I like it. But now it sets expectations. Well, it's all right. Deep Water Horizon. I <sighs> I liked it because first off, every day I love this movie. So so did I. I couldn't I believe. Couldn't believe it. I saw it on like DVD or no, streaming. Yeah. Eight, eight months later, ten months later, and I was like, why don't I know more people recommend this? Yeah, it's a really really good movie. I. I I don't know why it's not on my list other than in my mind they're just trying to survive a situation. And True, so but that's the only reason why. But it's not, I'm not negating it being on your list. In my mind, that's why I couldn't because I was on my list of to consider. Okay. And I just in the end I was like, ah. It is self preservation. Please. Yeah, yeah. But there are moments uh within the film numerous times where guys sacrifice themselves yes. for the greater good. Yeah. Like the one guy that goes up in the crane. Yes. That doesn't you know when he's going up there, like basically you're on the ground saluting because yeah. you're not coming back, man. Yeah. And uh Every like I think it was like three different times, maybe four, where people actively went into what they knew was basically a death trap because yeah. it's for the greater good and sacrificing themselves. Yeah. And I didn't know that story outside of the headlines and then the aftermath. Yeah. And to see that perspective of it is completely different. Right, and it was really powerful. I mean, that whole blow, when the thing blows up and Kurt Russell's in the shower, of all places to be in when something like that happens, it was so incredibly like just uh, ballsy to shoot a scene like that. And it's powerful as well for like the just how discombobulated you are in a situation yeah. like that, and then trying to put it together. And he's all bleeding, and you have you know Mark Wahlberg doing what he's doing and trying to get it, and then you have Gina Rodriguez like freaking out. So there's so much about that film that really bro I just can't speak enough about how much I enjoyed that movie. So I respect it being on your list. It's, sure, it's a damn good movie, man. Anyway, what you got at right. ten? So my number ten. <laughs> It's not going to be on your list. I don't know. Uh, my number 10 uh, is a bit of a controversial choice, but I felt like I had to put it on. Uh, 13 Hours. Okay. The Benghazi film that Michael Bay did. I enjoyed the shit out of this movie. So and did I. I. I'm not politically, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to approach this thing politically one way or the other. Like, whatever you believe happened, you believe happened. I'm not trying to sway any of our listeners or, or you like about this. To me... I saw an incredible film about this true life event that happened, and these guys violated their orders to save 25 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were saving civilians, they were saving other soldiers. And so, to me, there was something, because they were saving civilians as well, or contractors, to me, that speaks to them saving people at a more than saving soldiers in okay. my mind. Because when you go in my, because I served in my mind, when you, once you sign the contract, you put on the uniform, you are, uh, uh, accepting the possibility that you might die in uniform in whatever mission you're sent out to. Oh yeah. And so to me, that's why I excuse that situation a bit more. Like when soldiers or whatever, like that's, that's not necessarily, it's not, that it's not heroic, but I don't see it as a bigger thing. And when this situation 
everything went to shit. Yeah. And they violated the rules from the CIA guy, Bob, I think was his name. Yeah, the head of the station there. Yeah, who, who great actor. That guy's been in The Wire, a number of things, yeah. and I enjoy that guy. But James Badgedale and John Krasinski were the leads in this movie, and it was so it was so well done, man. And mm -hmm. when people, Surprised. I was so surprised. Yeah, right, because when people bash Michael Bay, that's the thing I try to explain to people. Bay knows he's making shit with the Transformers. He's doing those things tongue and cheek. Does he? Because he can do fantastically strong films like Pain and Gain, like uh, 13 Hours. Hours. There's other films he's done that show his ability as a give filmmaker. Me, give me another, because Pain and Gain, I'm not giving you. Well, you didn't like Pain and Gain? Yeah, you know what? I saw like 20 minutes of it, and I had, wow. I had uh, probably 100 people tell me it was a turd. Oh, I enjoy the shit. So I, I didn't really give it a fair shake. Okay, fair. Yeah. Well, people love The Rock. People love Bad Boys. Oh, look, love Armageddon. Yeah. You can make it decent. They make, uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm not taking yeah. any side, but Bay to me is like I make things go boom, and it's a music video. Right, but this was something else, right? This yeah, was no, 100%. That's yeah. why I was like, I, I can't believe Michael Bay did yeah. this. Yeah. Because it was a very small, self-contained, like he scaled back his overly slick visual. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It was still, there were still aspects of it there, but for the most part, he had left it behind. Right, and I sure, appreciate the that. started to happen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and even the, the interactions with people, like you know, anytime you see a Michael Bay, like it looks like almost a heightened reality. Yes. Because the lines are so clean and everything is just kind of so precise. Yeah. Even in the gritty, you know, areas. Yeah, I was surprised by that as well. And I, uh, that's one of the things that I really enjoyed about the film is that it got deeper into the situation mm -hmm. without choosing sides. Like, the, yes, it has a bent. Absolutely. It's impossible not to. Right. But it doesn't go, it doesn't mention by my names. It just plays the way it plays. And yeah, you live that event as you're watching the film. Yeah, it's they don't. Powerful. They don't decry the people doing this because they already know this is a bad thing. Yeah. And also, they're a stranger in a strange land. Yeah. So you're accepting that, like you said before. When you go there, this is a very real pos possibility, especially in 15 countries in the yeah. world where, yeah. you know, we're person uh, persona non grata around here and we know it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a good movie. Yeah, it was, and they, and they saved a bunch of people, and they sacrificed themselves in saving them. And so, to me, that's pretty heroic, and I and I enjoyed the film for that reason. Uh, all right, my yep. number my number nine is mm -hmm. uh, Glory. Good call. Yeah, I, I, to me, because these are former slaves. These mm -hmm. are are uh, I guess black is now the correct term again. Black people who are coming into the Civil War to serve the Union to fight as the first color battalion, black battalion, and they get so much crap for it. They have to go through what they go oh, yeah. through. You know, Denzel, Morgan Freeman, Andre Brower, just a great cast all around. Obviously, you know, Carrie Elwes and Matthew Broderick, but like, to me, it's it's about the black soldiers and oh, it is. the struggles that? that they go through. And yeah. they're sacrificing for a country that on both sides uh, has issues with them as members, as oh, citizens yeah, the, of the country. It's not like the North opened their arms. Yeah, exactly. They were still, like, there were still racists in the North yep. that, that thought, like, fine, you're not a slave, but you're not the same as me. Yeah, you're not the same as a white person. Yeah, me. you're yeah. not a full citizen. You know, you yeah. are a step below. Right. So don't even think. And by the end, when they're going out for that, uh, the final closing scene. Yeah. Just the respect that they get from the other soldiers. It, it's fully earned in that movie. Yeah. It's and, a good and, call. And I like that because it is that journey of, like, how do they become heroes? They have to come over. They have to overcome their own stuff, their own issues, their own on all sides feelings of injustice. Exactly on all sides, and so that when they sacrifice at the end, they're sacrificing to help the Union win the war, but also that particular battle to mm -hmm. keep them alive in that particular battle. So going into what they know is certain death. Exactly. All right. So my number eight is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> what do you got? I already have a TV movie on my list, yeah, so know. you know, uh, Spartacus. I it's not a stretch at all. That's a punt, is what that what? is. What? No, that's <laughs> that is a punt. awesome. That is awesome. a punt. All right, my friend, you're number seven. Uh, my number seven. This was the spot that I I, I was plugging and taking out, and plugging and taking okay. out, and plugging because now, like those bottom three, I wanted to talk about them. I wanted to have them on my list. Um, yes. But for some reason, seven was the one that kept sliding in and sliding out. So ultimately, what I settled upon. Yeah was basically my personal choice of five, six different films, which is Lincoln. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I struggled. Trust me. It's not on my list. That's why, because we, we, we pushed this this show back mm -hmm. a couple days, and then one more day after that, and I was perfectly fine, because it's like, I don't, I don't understand my list fully. <laughs> so what, what am Great. I going for? And there's a couple, but there's, there's one or two movies that I haven't seen yet, but once again, my list is 30-something long. So yeah. There's uh, enough that you have seen. Yeah, but this is another. So, it's the 
the actually getting the law passed that in essence makes mm -hmm. free, you know, slaves, free men, and equal to anybody else. They have full citizenship, full yeah. righthood. And the political uh, machinations behind the scenes to just push that through. Yeah. Knowing ultimately, like, this is for the greater good. I, and the scene where he is pounding on the table, like, no, I want it now. Yeah, yeah. Now. And, and you can feel, like, you know now through 2020 hindsight, looking back and be like, of course it had to be now. Because everything that he foresees of if this war ends and then we allowed them back in, now they have as much political clout as we do. Yeah. And they can stop this from coming. Mm -hmm. So if we don't do this right now, it's never going to happen. And everybody else is like, why? Because they didn't want to look that far down. They just wanted to end the war. Yeah. And ultimately, like, the North knew because they had more people and they had the manufacturing mm -hmm. that they were going to win this war. It was a matter of numbers. Yeah. Like the South was excellent tacticians and they did, you know, a, a hell of a job with the smaller forces they did. But at the same time, just like, this is inevitable. So why don't we focus on the next battle and win that while we have. Yeah. And it's the uplifting society. We still hold that man up saying that that was something that was good. Yeah. That is, that is a benchmark by which we can judge ourselves and know that we are progressing along a trajectory that we all appreciate and know is the right thing. Yeah. And that is heroic to me. Mm -hmm. To see that, it still inspires the generations that have never met the man and don't know anything really about him. That's a good point, man, yeah. So that's why it made my list. Yeah. I think it's a great choice. I'm sorry it is. I didn't make mine. I love the movie. Uh, certainly, it, and you do. You, you already it. know that. Yeah. It's one of my favorite Spielbagos, but it's... Spielbago. Uh, Anyway, we had an, I had an, uh, went to see uh, my friends uh, screened E.T. last night at their house. Uh, hadn't seen it in decades. Change your opinion at all? Not really. Yep. I, I understand why people like the film. Me too. I think it's an enjoyable film to watch. Absolutely. But there are plot holes galore in this film. And I got into a discussion with one of the people there, uh, this girl I just met for the first time, this woman I met for the first time. And she was like, she'd been drinking and mm -hmm. you know, we, we were having a nice fun conversation. And, and I, and one of my friends walked over and was like, so still not in your top 10 Spielberg film. Cause he listens to our podcast. And okay. I said, yeah, still not in the top 10. Nope. And she goes, what? There's no way Just name me 10 other. And I start naming, I get to eight before she's like, Oh, damn. Spielberg's okay. done a lot of great work. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So she didn't want to give me Catch Me If You Can or Minority Report, which I do put, think are better films. You punched her in one of her boobs, no, did you I not? Did. Just socked her. Physically. Ah, just lashed out like a six-year-old. <laughs> you know, that doesn't make sense. Especially Minority Report. Are you fucking kidding me? No, she hit me, actually. <laughs> did she? Yes. She hit you in your boob? No, no, in my boob, but in my right arm, she was like, Catch Me If You Can, that's stupid. And she hit me in her arm, and I was like, oh, you're insane. Oh, you got to watch it again. It's so playful. In, in fact, when I went to see Close Encounters of the Third Kind in the theater, when it screened for, um, for they screened it in 4K or whatever, I forgot how much I enjoyed that movie. I put that movie above E.T. Close Encounters. So, sure. To me, there's a number of films. So it didn't change my opinion. It still was enjoyable, and I understand why people love that film. No way, filmmaking wise <laughs> and film wise, is that thing in the top five even of Spielberg films? It's ridiculous. I love that you're parsing out a defensive like fortification, saying, "Listen, I understand if you like it. I get it." And then let me tell you why like it's not even in five. <laughs> and you just built up with those two sentences. Be like, that is my defense. I'm not saying you're wrong, but you're fucking wrong. <laughs> it's the kindest way to do it. Yeah, it's the way I've learned it is. to do it. I've it's the kindest it. way to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. And it, th that's the best part. It's a matter of opinion. Yeah. So somebody listening is going, you guys are fucking wrong. Yeah, of course they are. To, to that individual, you're not wrong. That's no, your opinion. It's exactly. fully valid. Exactly. But you're wrong. So... <laughs> <laughs> What's your number six? Uh, my number six <laughs> um, is another because of the the, the more fluid de definition. Apollo thirteen. Oh, interesting. Because for me, okay, to, to me, it's it's a lot of the hero's perspective yeah. are the engineers and whatnot on the ground, right? Because Hanks and and uh, uh, Bacon and Paxson. Um, all have to live through it. It is a mm -hmm. self preservation. Mm -hmm. So that is heroic in a different way. Yeah. But the fact that NASA, none of those individuals can actually be there and see the problem and diagnose it with their hands. Right. And they're all just have to push themselves to be better than they ever thought they possibly could from every department. Yeah. Like when they come in and they have to make that uh, extra filter, air filter, and they're like, we literally have to fit, what is it, a square peg in a round hole? Yes. Yeah. And eventually they did. And yeah. Sinise in the simulator going, we have to get the ampage below a certain point. Otherwise, this is all a pointless exercise. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many people just like this, and this is all in service of getting, of saving three people. Yes. Three people. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you could say the reputation and the funding and everything else, sure. but I don't think any of them gave two shits about that at the time, mm -hmm. except maybe a couple assholes, because in a company that large, somebody would think of that and go, well, what about our reputation? Right. Like, whoever's in PR. Uh, but everybody else is just like, I could give a damn. You could take my check away. My house, I don't care. We have to get them home. Yeah. And all those people striving to do that, to me, is heroic. They're all, I mean, the stakes are... I guess not the same because they can't die in, in that from other heroes' journeys. Mm -hmm. But to me, the fact that they could push themselves to those kind of limits mm -hmm. is another heroic act. Absolutely. Definitely a legitimate choice. I mean, I think it's a fantastic film that explores that because just because you're saving only three people instead of 3,000 doesn't mean you're still not saving three lives. Yeah, it know? doesn't it's negate. A, right, exactly. So it's important here. And this is a, and these guys, although in a way you can say the same thing like soldiers, as soon as they sign up to be astronauts, they might sign up to have something happen to them. They are signing it up to It still matters, though. It still matters to do what you need to do to save them, and especially given all the stuff that occurred before they even got on the rocket. Oh, yeah. You know, to, to have all that occur and to have to be it, like incorporating a new guy who's kind of subbing in and then all the stuff going down on the ground to try to help them in the in, in space. It's just fantastic. And Tom Hanks is just so perfectly cast, mm -hmm. you know, as uh, as the lead in that film. And so and uh, Revel, is that his name? I forget something like that. And so it's just like he's so great. Oh, uh, no, it's uh, Lowell. Lowell. OK. Or Lovell. Lovell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lovell. Yeah. Like yep. Bob Lovell. Jim or Lovell? Jim, Jim Lovell. Jim Lovell. Lovell. Yeah. So yeah, um, he's man. just so perfectly cast. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to think of the other two guys in there. I can't remember. Deacon Deke was the guy that was the former astronaut that now basically was in charge of who chose the next mission. Right. Like who got to go on that? Was it Slater? No. <sighs> Try. Damn it! I'm not going to be able to pull okay. it. <laughs> All right. So what do you got next? All right. So my number seven is uh, Hotel Rwanda. Another punt. Wow. Another punt. That's a that's a incredible film. I'm glad it's on your list. All right. Uh, my number six is Selma. Okay, not on my list. Okay, and maybe this is my counter to your Lincoln. I sure I enjoy this film because this is one of the best films ever done by Martin Luther King Jr. And of course, he was trying to save all blacks in this country from the racism, from uh, being seen as second class citizens. And you see, this is a very a more in depth exploration mm -hmm. of the man's flaws and his heroic nature. Sure, uh, to do this, and you see the struggles he has in trying to have the Montgomery boycott and all this thing that's going on with the bus. The bus, all this things goes on, and to get that march going, you know, and all he has to endure, and he is doing these things so that he can do what's best for the con not just for black people, but for the country itself. Yeah, and this is where, to me, the heroic nature of his of his uh, history as a person in this country and also in this film mm -hmm. is explored thoroughly. And I really enjoy the film. And Ava DuVernay did such a fantastic job with this film and really bringing him to life. And I remember seeing the the the, the, the uh, TV movie with Paul Winfield. It was a good, good thing. But like, when you can go to film, and especially with everything that's come out in the subsequent years since that TV movie with all the stuff about like, yeah. cheating on his wife and all the FBI tapes and all these other things that were going on it with him. It creates a more... A relatable individual exactly and i think Selma really did that and uh i appreciated that film so much and and you see what he has to endure himself uh from both sides from both whites and blacks and also people who are on his side and not on mm -hmm. his side to, to make this all happen so i just think it's a fantastic performance it's better because otherwise you know you lionize someone yeah so that you only look back at them through like a rosy perspective yeah and it's basically the equivalent of turning in like a of a, a bad person into a, a super villain kind mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. like when people look back at some of the world's worst leaders that did terrible you know yeah. th things and whatnot uh it's if you pay like that kind of broad a stroke it's better to see the man for who he is to yeah. see his flaws I his agree. pros and his cons because yeah. that way it teaches us like maybe i have that innate Ness in me, and also mm -hmm. for the the other end of the spectrum, the bad side, maybe we could recognize it faster and be yeah. like, you know what, this is you know something we need to head off at the pass, but we need to be able to see them as people as yeah. opposed to just this perfectly, you know, bright white light on one side and it's just like the red light on the other. It's like they have to, otherwise they lose their humanity and they just become fables. Yeah, we 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 law like. In the beginning in this country in film, that's what it was. It was all about legends and fables and trying mm -hmm. to show people a better way to be, the possibility of being 
uh, being someone famous, this is the great things that they can do. And we never explored the humanity of the character, but we've changed so much as a movie going public and as public itself. Like in the 60s and 70s, the Watergate and all that kind of shit, Vietnam, that's when we started to see like the other, the uglier side of people that we'd respected or admired. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kennedy escaped that because he was assassinated before we could find out all this other shit about him. Yeah. And so when that, that our lens has gotten tighter and tighter and tighter about that so much so that now biopics are more successful when they show you the uglier side or the less the flaws of this these people yeah. because you can respect them more in the long run for overcoming those flaws mm -hmm. or having those flaws and still doing good work anyway and that's exactly. important because we all have that ability to be that the dichotomy within all of us exactly. exactly we're all angels and we're all devils exactly, exactly. just fighting those you know uh, hopefully not all the time <laughs> <laughs> That's a, uh, I didn't know how to end that sentence precisely. I'm like, well, there we're going to go. We're going like to land it. the bird real quick. <laughs> All right. So what's your number five? Uh, my number five um, is, uh, I wonder if this will make your list, mm. Braveheart. Where are you punting? Okay, I have my reasons at five, and you know this is one of my favorite movies. I just, I know of all time. I've come around in this film a lot. Recently. It's it's one of the best. But uh, anyway, there, there's a reason to made five. But uh, so what do you got? Okay, my number five is, and I don't know if this will be on your list. Quick question: yeah. uh, The Imitation Game did not make my list. Wow, it's on the side. Yep, I recently discovered this film, maybe three four months ago. I watched it when I was still working at Universal Studios. I was just flipping through Netflix to see what uh, something I hadn't seen before, and I just stumbled upon it, and I was in the mood. Okay. And I watched it, and I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Thoroughly enjoyed Cumberbatch. Kira Knightley maybe some of the best work I've ever seen her do. All the other character actors that are in there, Matthew Good, all these other actors that are in there, just really, really enjoyable stuff. And what he did, and the choices he had to make, especially when he has to make that decision to let his compatriot's brother die in an attack so the Germans don't find out that they've broken the code. Can't. Yes, and this is why it's heroic, because sometimes being heroic is making the harder decision that will hurt people around you for the greater good. And that's what I enjoyed about uh, uh, Cumberbatch's performance, of uh, this of Alan Turi, this character, and everything that he endured, you know, and being uh, vilified as a homosexual and all these kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Like, and here he is saving the war. He saved the war by breaking this code. And so that, to me, is heroic. And he... He had to go past himself. He had to understand how to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. He had been so lost in his own head about how to do things that he had no concept of how to work as a team. And so he had to learn himself how to break down and become a better person, so to speak, and work with the team so that he could solve what needed to be solved. And he could feel the humanity of what he did. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's what I really enjoyed about the film. And, and I like the way it came across. And I was surprised how much I enjoyed it, Matt, because I had heard that it always, Cumberbatch is great, the film is not that good. That's how I felt. Yeah. Yeah, and I felt coming back, which was great. The film was okay. Okay, that's fair. It's an interesting story. Yeah, I, I would love to see him try it again, and like, but at the same time, he'll age out of the role, so I guess redo it. But he was he yeah. was good in it. Yeah, I liked him in it a lot. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it just that's I found it heroic because of everything he had to endure, and then everything he had to overcome to do this and to make it possible for us to win the for the allies to win the war. So yeah. All right, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is a punt from earlier, earlier Hotel Rwanda. Ooh, okay. Just because it's a, it's a, this is just a hotel owner. Yeah. This is just a regular everyday bloke. Yeah. And uh, violence erupts. It's the the Hutus versus the Tutsis. Yeah. And the Tutsis are the the basically the oppressed upon. The genocide that is about to become is going to be, at you know, unfortunately, it's going to befall them. Yeah. And Cheadle runs a hotel. He's Hutu. I think his wife is Tutsi. Yeah. And. There's spillover from like the UN camp or something. So people are coming over there and he's got to protect them, but at the yep. same time still make it look like it's a functioning hotel. Yep. And he's got to deal with numerous uh, factions, both political and militaristic, and trying to keep these people safe and throwing off the scent and bribing yep. people and, and whatnot. It just, because this happened so recently, yeah. it had a, an effect on me in that like, God, th this... This was 10 years ago. This yeah. was 15, where I don't know what it is now, but when that movie came out, I, I, it seemed like a short enough time span. That, like, I, this blows my mind that this is happening on this big scale. I remember the stories, yeah. but at the same time, I didn't know the gravity or the reality of just corpses. Yeah. Just the of utter decimation of one half of the population. It's insane what we know happens in other countries. That if it happened in our country, we would lose our fucking minds. Yeah, but we allow it to exist in our mind. Somehow we compartmentalize it that mm -hmm. it's not as much of a tragedy 
as it is, or we have some kind of abstract understanding of it, but it's not so much that it affects our daily lives, right? Because it's because of the difference in land and culture and people and color of skin, even we go, Oh, that's their issue. You know, yeah. African genocide, incredible history of horrible stuff done to people as if these numbers are irrelevant almost. Do you know what I'm saying? Which is tragic. You know, mm-hmm. it's so it's like thousands of thousands of people have died in switching political affiliations in a country that is still trying to figure out where it is. And this multiple times in numerous countries in Africa. And that's what's so heartbreaking. And when you see it brought to life in Hotel Rwanda, it, it brings it home to you. Like you said, Matt, it yeah. affects you. You know, it came out in 2004, but it affects you still. Like when you watch it, it's not, it's not a film that I can go back to and watch over and over again. No, because it's not at it's all too much to endure. I, I know the story. Yeah. So I don't need to, it's fine. It's vivid. It yeah. lives in my mind and it's, yeah. it's, you know, yeah. There are certain movies where it's just like, I've seen that, and yeah. I don't ever need to see it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes that's a good thing, and just like, okay, and other times it's a bad thing. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes a movie is just so crap, and be like, I can't believe I just wasted, usually in a movie like that, like 90 to 100 minutes of my life on this turd. Yeah. <laughs> that's the worst. Something like this, you're like, it's, it's, it, it lasts yeah. with you, and that's, that's fine. It affects you as an individual, and then hopefully sparks some sort of change, whether it be positive or whatever the case is. But uh, yeah, it's, it just it was an affecting movie, and also in that this is modern day. Yeah. This isn't removed by hundreds of years. Right. And colonialist times. Exactly. And generations upon generations, you have no tangential connection to any of those people. So there's a disassociation. Whereas this is like, yeah. Like uh, some of my family on my uh, dad's side has to do business in Africa and they fly over there. And you're like, oh, in one country, my uncle has uh, two bodyguards with him on his person at all times, one in front, one in behind. But then they do that with cars as well, and they have to. The first time he was there, and this is, was in Kenya, and Kenya's not bad, but at the same time, he's a, a businessman coming in, right. which makes him a target. Right. So, might as well. It's worth the precaution. Uh, the cars all have to check in with each other when they're on the road every uh, like five minutes or something. Wow. Five, or maybe it's 10, but I think it's five. That way, if somebody doesn't check in, they know how long the, the wide the radius is. Yeah. Of how far they could have gotten away in certain areas. You're like, oh my God. That's insane, dude. Yeah, and this is a safer country. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that continent is just steeped in, in some terrible history, man. So, yeah. Uh, that was your number four, right? Yeah. Okay, so my number four is Gandhi. I still haven't seen it. Really? We've talked about it in the past. I'm going to bring you this Blu-ray. I, uh, it is a movie that I go back to over and over and over again. And this is a three-hour movie, Matt. Yeah, it is. It That's is. why I thought about watching it for this. Oh, yeah? And I was like, I don't have three hours and change right now <laughs> any day since we set the topic. That's right. It, we're busy people, man. Mm-hmm. Um, this movie and Lawrence of Arabia are the two longest movies that I come back to all the time, watch over and over and over again. God, and like, I will flip it on sometimes on one of the pay channels, and I'm like, fuck. I'm stuck here for an hour because Ben Kingsley's performance is so Sir Ben Kingsley's performance is so amazing. He's 24, 26 years old doing this fucking part. It's, it's correlative to Orson Welles and Kane to see that the, the believable aging that mm-hmm. occurs in this movie and the way as an actor, he physically transforms as he gets older. At no point do you doubt this man is in his 60s when Kingsley is like 24 years old playing him in his 60s. And you see the progression of what he's trying to do to release India, to save India from, from the British rule and all the things that endure and the terrible tragedies and the people that are killed. And even the stuff he has to overcome as he transitions from being an educated lawyer yeah. into this person who is Indian and embracing his Indian heritage more and like, you know, losing his hair and wearing the, the uh, what, just the robes that he's wearing and all that he's walking around in, in the sandals that he walks around and how the people around him have to change and how he is so principled that he will not sacrifice his principles no matter what. And so to me, that's incredibly heroic because there are so many opportunities for him to sacrifice his principles for the for what you would be the short term. Yep. And he doesn't because he understands the long term of what he's trying to do more so than almost anyone else around him, which is what makes him so amazing and which makes the film so great. Richard Attenborough directed that film, who's an actor as well. And mm-hmm. it's, just, it's just incredible to see what a love letter it is to India and also what a love letter it is to Gandhi. And he is not a man without flaws. And there are moments where he has these like extreme reactions to things. And, you know, it's so 
brilliant. And the scenes where he has to bring uh, uh, the Muslim uh, people together, uh, you know, uh, with Christian and with other religions, like the, and the Hindus bring the Muslim and Hindus together. The things he has to, the decisions he has to make, he's almost like King Solomon at times. And okay. it's just so, it's just such a brilliant film. And it's, 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 it's my kind of film. So that's why. Obviously. I, yeah. Yeah. So. You get sucked into it on the reg. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I really do. <laughs> All right. So, what's your number three? Uh, my number three uh, is Hacksaw Ridge. Oh, I, dude, I, I could love not this. Put, I couldn't yeah. believe how much I enjoyed this movie. Yeah, I man. even knowing going in, it's like this is the type of movie it's going to be, and be like, guess what? You succeeded. You succeeded, and the fact that the guy's a, a pacifist. Yeah. I mean, a full fledged. I do not carry a gun into war. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we all have morals. Yeah. So you you signed up like I can do I mean just the idea of basically creating the you need somebody to run in and yeah. save people yeah. once they get wounded and he did that like the the first time coming over the ridge which is it's crazy that that was how we needed to attack that is go up a yeah. cargo net yeah. how high do you think that was 200 well, 250 feet at least yeah maybe yeah. higher maybe higher like oh my god this is the military plan we're going to scale up over the side of this yeah what is it like, uh, uh, Hannibal going through the Alps that yeah. nobody thought he could do? Right. Like, ah, it's fine, yeah. whatever. And he comes through, and he's got this motherfucker's got elephants now. <laughs> I think it was uh, Hannibal. Yeah, it's Hannibal. Um, yeah, so we have to go up over that, and just as soon as soon as you cross over that ridge, yeah, it is every dystopian Mordor type of image you've ever thought about. Like, if the world came to an end, yeah. And this is where you have to walk into, and the fact that he goes in without a gun, yeah. without a way to protect himself, no knife, no handgun, no grenades, nada, right. and he's just there to drag guys back to safety over and over and over again. It's insane. It is. And and I, I couldn't put it on my list because I don't feel the rest of the film holds up for me. Okay. Uh, everything that all the battle scenes are fucking amazing. And you didn't like the Vince Vaughn? The... No, 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 because it, it was very reminiscent of Full Metal Jacket, and to sure. me it was a lesser version of that, and I... Yeah, you can't compare the two, I don't no, think. No, right, and I don't think the, I didn't think the Hugo Weaving stuff really worked for me, so I thought, it was a bit, I thought it was a bit schmaltzy until they get to the war. Then the war, all of a sudden, it is graphic as fuck, See, and I love that. Yeah, the war, to me, excuses any sin it had before. Oh, okay. Because it was just that, the fact that also, like, Gibson in interviews was saying, I had yeah. to leave out a few things because <laughs> no one would have believed it. <laughs> Jesus. And you're like, <laughs> what? What did he do? Did he walk on water? What did this guy do? Because what he did is staggeringly unbelievable. Yeah, it is. And the fact, the, the, the only one that I can uh, remember is he said like he was getting, he got injured, uh, the focus of the movie. Yeah. I can't remember his name for the life of me, unfortunately. Well, Andrew and, Garfield's character. Yeah. But I'm trying to think of the yeah. actual character itself. We'll call him Hacksaw. So anyway, sure, Hacksaw. Jim Duggan. <laughs> He was on a stretcher, and he saw somebody else, and he felt that they were more injured, so he just rolled himself off and was like, put him on, take him back. I will wow. lay here injured. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. What a sacrificing guy. Dude, crazy. Yeah, yeah. But they do a good job of laying the groundwork of this guy's character. You know, they, from the Excellent beginning. job. Yeah, right. His, his uh, religious character, uh, the way he courts, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the nurse. The nurse in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And uh, and then the court scene when he has to defend himself, like it's very clear that he once again, like we said, Gandhi is a man with principles. He's not going mm -hmm. to not going to violate them. Principles. Yeah, exactly. Go even forward. even if it means, according to you, that I have to go to jail mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah, and I respect people like that, Matt. Honestly, I respect if you're willing to sacrifice for your religion uh, to take the consequences. I think there's more nobility and strength in that. And I, whether I believe your religion or not. Uh, if you're willing to uh, sacrifice prison time, sacrifice whatever physical harm for your belief, then I, I respect that, you know, in some way. So, uh, you know, and, and I don't mean terrorism. I mean, I'm willing to take the hits because this yeah. is what I believe. Without know? a doubt. So, yeah. So. Anybody that's willing to do that for their convictions and ideals yeah. is, you know, impressive on some level. Yes. All right. That was your number. My three. What do you got? Okay. Hold on here. Let me open up my list because my phone keeps shutting down. Uh, my number three is Argo. Did you put Argo on your list? Argo is not on my list. Wow. Okay. I I <laughs> talked to the me. movie's okay. Oh wow. Movie's okay. Wow. That's how I felt about it. I walked out and be like, like the plane takes off and they all start celebrating. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they could get you to turn around. You know, I'm pretty sure. 
the Iranian government or someone could get you. Like the as soon as they get to a certain height, right. they're like, bang, it's party time. It's yeah. I, I don't know. Just the movie as a whole to me was just like, okay. The best parts were the cutaways back to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it I thought was meh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I disagree. I enjoy... I'm sure everybody <laughs> listening disagrees as well. <laughs> and they're going to be calling me an idiot. And no. that's fine. I just... They will. I'm sure there's something... Someone will. like it. That's um, fine. Your I opinion's st- not wrong. As much as I... I put that as this high because I do think it's an enjoyable film for this kind of category. And uh, I still think Zero Dark Thirty deserved the Oscar more. Oh, uh, without a doubt. Yeah. Wasn't I, even close to me. We don't, we don't disagree on that. And uh, But I... This is a heroic thing that this guy did, you know, going in there, figuring out how to save these people uh, in this situation when so many, it's almost like the Mogadishu thing, right? He is on their terrain trying to figure out how to save fellow Americans out of this situation. Bullshitting his way. Exactly. And not knowing who to trust, not to trust. The maid was turning on them. So all those, and then trying to uh, train them to do the things that he tells them to do so that they can get away. And so to me, all around, it's a very heroic effort. You know, I didn't, we didn't need the Ben Affleck without a shirt on type moment scene, which is so annoying at times when I see that in films because it's so fucking unnecessary. But like, I, I liked that he delivered a more nuanced performance, a more subtle performance in playing this character. And yeah, you had the comic relief with Alan Arkin and John Goodman, which bounces the film out. But the thing that carries the film is all the actors who play the hostages. They're so good. Uh, Scoot McNear, I think his name is, and uh, Carrie Bechet, who are both in Halt and Catch Fire. Mm-hmm. They're so good. And there's a, those other actresses that are in there and actors that are in there as well. They carry the film. There's the one dude from Days to Confuse. Yes, yes. Uh, Rory C- uh, Cochran. Uh, there you go. I think his name is. Yeah, he was yeah. also in what, Black Mass? Yes. Oh, my God. He's good in Black Mass, right? Yeah. You almost forget that's the same guy, the kid from Days to Confuse. I know, Confused, from Days to Confuse. Yeah. Slater, I it's believe so the character's good. name was. <laughs> Right, and so like you, you see all that, and and uh, the, what he has to do to get them out, and so for me, that's why I, I enjoy the film thoroughly for that reason. Okay, um, uh, yeah, the ending is is bullshit because that that's not how it happened at all. But um, I it's just, done for dramatic. I think Goodman and Arkin steal the show entirely to me. They were my favorite parts of the movie, hands down. It's not even close. This is interesting. Yeah. What's your number two? This is interesting. My number two is a punt from earlier. Okay. Which is Spartacus. Spartacus. I'm Spartacus. That's they, my Tony Curtis. This is, I was surprised it was this low. I figured this was going to be an easy one. I didn't think it would be this high for you. Yeah. But I, I, I figured we'd be top five ish. Well, I thought because it's a film based on a guy that we only have history from, like, you know, how dependable is the historical nature of it? So that's what moved it down for me. Okay. But the film itself is motherfucking fantastic, dude. So good, because we're going to be having that. Discussion, I think, coming up in your next two. All right, fair. Uh, <coughs> I, it's one of those things of it hits me in a great sweet spot. I like yeah. movies and I like history. And to see a part of history that I've only read about kind of come to life yeah. and tell this really interesting story of, you don't talk about human spirit. Yeah. This guy's a hero to, uh, you know. All slaves, yeah. Slaves. Yeah. To, uh, the utter, like, they are fodder for the entertainment of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Whether it's on the grandest of stages or the smallest of arena in some small town, yeah, they are. I mean, just fucking cannon fodder. Mm-hmm. They're just there to die for the populace, the Roman citizens' amusement and entertainment, yeah. and also do other slave things: take care of the house, right. run this, clean the stables, whatever yeah. the case is. Like different shops also had slaves. Yeah, there were slaves in the employ of numerous people. Without, I mean, that was mm-hmm. the spoils of war. They took slaves from all the different regions, the incorporated into the empire. And to see somebody eventually be like, why? why? There, We have the numbers. Why do we allow ourselves this? And to stand up in the face of that and be like, death is the only outcome. Yeah. Because we are not large enough to take this this empire. But God damn it, we could take a chunk out of them. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can change some things going forward. I won't make it out of this, but the next guy might have a little bit easier. I think that's what's so great about the film, too. Is it, and some of the best films matter when they're reluctant heroes, whether real life or fake. You know, mm-hmm. some of the best films are reluctant heroes as protagonists, and he is absolutely that in Spartacus. And that end sequence with him on the cro- like the the dialogue he has with uh, I think Gene Simmons plays the female character, the the um, and. Uh, uh, Peter Ustinov there like that whole scene uh, is the perfect button to end the movie in yeah. such a great noble way and you understand how his journey changed him and how he changed the mm-hmm. people who went along with him on the journey you know and Douglas does such a great job in this part and 
I saw it um, uh, well, on the TCM festival. I went and saw it in, on the big screen. It's the way to see it, man. I, it's such. I kind of feel like I should film. see it on the big screen yeah, eventually. It's really epic, man, and it's it, and you appreciate the scope of it because those aren't that's not CGI. Those are real thousands oh, yeah. of extras. And it's so interesting that it's Kubrick. Yeah, yeah, and it's, he was brought in. He was brought in. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he was brought in. To I've direct seen some it. behind the scenes. What was that? Oh, it was in Trumbo. Yes, where they've got uh, Kirk Douglas trying to get him to come in to do the rewrites. God, I don't care about any of that stuff. I want you to write pictures with me. But right. Uh, yeah, it was another yeah. thing, and it was hero- that, and that's a great point you bring up, Mac. Kirk Douglas was heroic in bringing this thing because he was uh, Dalton Trumbo was one of the bla- uh, the, the black yeah blacklist. He just right. I, he brought them back. He brought him back and put him under a different pseudonym and got him, you know, uh, got him some work, mm-hmm. and he did fantastic work on the film. And Kubrick was brought in because Kirk had worked with him in Paths of Glory. And okay, he didn't like what the first director was had done. And so Kubrick was, and it's one of the most unKubrickian films that you'll hundred percent that you'll ever see. That's why, yeah, it's like I, I didn't, I didn't see it until I was a little bit older. Yeah, but I'd already seen a number of Kubrick. Yeah, and I knew of Spartacus because it's impossible not to on some level. Right. I am Spartacus. I've heard that as a joke, not on stage or anything, like that, but like so in real life, like yeah. an older generation would yeah. say that you know. It's their Bueller kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's just something they all know. It's a shorthand. You could use it for a joke in yeah. you know mixed company kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and it's just no Kubrick and, and thoroughly love mm-hmm. a ton of his work. Yeah. And go back and see this and be like, man, I can't believe like the the professionalism of it is very Kubrickian. Yeah. And other aspects, but the the what he was allowed to do later on, which is basically put his spin on it, right? Because I think it was in this like I'm here to do a job, yeah, as opposed to I'm here to bring this to life. Somebody else has already brought it to life, so I'll help you achieve, you know, your com- as a common goal. Well, it's an interesting story too, Matt, because they didn't get along on Paths of Glory necessarily, Kubrick and and Douglas. They're both very headstrong in their ideas, and I think Kubrick was still figuring out what his voice was artistically, and so and you have Douglas who's like you know a mainstay, and yeah, he is like pushing back a little bit, and I think that's where. Uh, why Douglas brought him on? Because he respected the fact that Kubrick would stand by his vision as forcefully as it is at such a young age and had such little experience in Hollywood. And so uh, when he brought him on, that's what you see there in the film. And I agree with you. It's it's so it's so not what you'd expect from Kubrick. But yeah. the professional, that's a great way you put it. You sense the professionalism of the film. Oh, yeah. it's And the scope of it is amazing. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And he never did another epic like this. Never no. did another epic like this. That's why it's so baffling yeah. on some level. But even within the epicness of it, you have this interesting th- statements that he's making because if you see the uncut version you see the homosexual scene with Tony oh, Curtis oh okay Lawrence I've heard about it yeah. but I there's a, there's a scene with Tony Curtis and Lawrence Olivier in the bath and it's very like he's making comments about the Romans he's making comments about what, what true comments yes true comments exactly yeah that's, that's what's so uh, something we've been good. whitewashing out of exactly other Roman because usually it's <laughs> like the, just a ridiculous white toga and they have laurels yeah. and they speak with a British Not accent always with a British accent yeah and just like uh, they were only this they become a caricature in and of themselves yeah yeah. And to see a different side. Even the character of Peter Ustinov is interesting in how he's not a conventional type of senator. And mm-hmm. I love that. So, uh, No, no, wait. Charles Lawton. Sorry, Charles Lawton, not Peter Ustinov. Charles L- uh, I Ustinov just agreed. I was like, sure. Yeah, sure. The Ustinov's the one who does the uh, uh-huh. gladiator stuff. Uh, all right. So then my number two is the punch from earlier, which is Braveheart. Okay. So what we said about not knowing the character, we because we know Braveheart now in hindsight, yeah. there's, okay, this didn't happen. And this didn't have. It doesn't depreciate my love of that movie. But when we're talking about heroes, the others above it are just yeah. like that's a true story. Spartacus did exist, and what we know of him with yeah. this was represented. Right. Whereas we can contradict within Braveheart, but at the same time, it in no way depre- it depreciates my love of that film. Right. William Wallace did exist. Yes. Whether he did everything that was in the film, you can and on the timeline and on the everything right. else. But that being said, the film is utterly. It's just amazing. It's yep. one of the best. It yep. could be my favorite Oscar winner. And I remember, oh, wow, that's a, wow, that's a I, strong statement. It's in the ballpark. Okay. Because I fucking love that movie. It's probably more than in the ballpark. It's probably like on the team. Oh, yeah. It's on your team. <laughs> it is on my team. <laughs> He's pitching. My starting five. <laughs> Braveheart is pitching. Uh, no, the, uh, I remember when we did the Epics one, when we did it on camera, uh, this version of the show, we did the Epics one, and I had, I don't think I even put Braveheart on the top 10 Epics, and I rewatched it again I don't know, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, and I couldn't have been more wrong. And for whatever reason, sometimes you have to rediscover a film again. To the scale of those battles yeah. makes it epic in and of itself. Right, but I thought it was just the battles. And then when you go back and see the, the sweet romance at the beginning, but then also when he loses his father, 
how he has to learn to be a more educated person, learn to be a guy who uses his brains, and then... You talk about Robert the Bruce? You're talking about... Oh, you, uh, from a young age. I'm right. sorry. I thought you were talking about later on in the movie, no, loses no. his father, and I was like, no. okay, yeah, oh, yeah. are we talking about Longshanks and then the yeah. show? Like, who are we talking about? But yeah, as a, as a child... Yes. Yeah. He's, you see the beginnings. Of, he has all this information, but when is he ever going to get to use it? You don't know. He's gonna. He, he could have easily settled in with this woman and just like had his life and built his life. That's what he tried to do. But right. And once again, like Spartacus, a reluctant hero in this battle to save Scotland from England. Now, does he succeed? No. But he's still heroic in his nature in the film, in trying to give them. And just like Spartacus, he yeah. pays the ultimate well, price. He doesn't, but Scotland ultimately does. Yes, exactly. And it's thanks to him helping putting into motion right. and coalescing all these people and be like, yeah. we have to provide or like create a unified front. Yeah. Otherwise England is just going to run roughshod over us yeah. continuously, just never going to end. So if we don't band together, yeah. but yeah, man, that, that movie, it's still like the back of the, the, the hairs on the back of my neck will still stand up in certain <laughs> scenes, but freedom. Oh Yeah. Are you f- kidding me? Or when Robert the Bruce uh, betrays oh, him? He betrays him? And the uh, the look in his eyes. Once again, Mel Gibson is the only one that can do that. Just yeah. like in, in Lethal Weapon, there are points where just like his eyes, man. He's going through an emotional roller coaster right now. But the look on his face of like, I can't believe it's you that betrays me. Right. You, yeah. you who I held above all others. I will follow you if yeah. you just unite us. I will follow you. Yeah. And that to Robert the Bruce is like, this is what this is all I need. Right. Yes, I believe in him so much that if he believes in me, we can do this because I can get all these assholes on board. Right. And just the the look of betrayal in his face. And it's not, he's not upset. He's destroyed. Yeah. Just it, it's a second heartbreak. It Her is. Her death and then that betrayal. And and I think on some level it hurts worse. Yes. Yes, because he was starting to believe again. Yeah. He was starting to believe again. He had yeah, he had yeah. given up. Yeah. And he had found hope again. And yeah. just to see hope dash and be like, is that what life is? Yeah. Oh man! Nobody, and you're right, Matt. Nobody plays what I would call, what I would say is brutally vulnerable, yep. like Gibson. The scene in *Lethal Weapon* when he puts the gun, gun in his mouth. Holy fuck! When you compare that to that scene with Robert the Bruce when he's betrayed, there's such a power in his vulnerability, man. That is like, it's primal. And it is. You really sense it, and that's one of the reasons why people still love that guy, dude. People still love Gibson, because no matter who, what he did, who can do camera, that? People still love him. Yeah. Exactly. Find me another actor. Like, and there are some that I think could get there, but sure. To the degree that he does, like that's just an innate skill that he has that others don't. Mm-hmm. Certain mm-hmm. actors can do things that others can't, and he is the best at like I. This is what a shattered man looks like. Yeah, yeah. He may be putting on this like rough facade, and I can take on the world. Yeah. But I mean, they'll crumble. Just like the rest of us, we're a house of cards. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> thankfully, mine hasn't toppled over just yet. <laughs> well, you got a good woman. All right, here we go. Number one. Number one is uh, Schindler's List. Schindler's List. Okay. Whew. Here All we right, go. Good. We have one thing in common. I mean, for God's sakes, <laughs> I was a little worried. I was a little worried. I thought you might throw a, a curveball in there. What a what a. Um, it's a film that's still. It's actually one of these films that I can go back to and watch over mm-hmm. and over again, no matter how brutal it is, because the performances are so amazing. And it's the right kind of comedic touch in certain moments to uh, balance out the incredible, uh, uh, I don't know, authentic, authentic it would evil. Just be, yeah, it'd just be a slog the whole time to sit yeah. through and be like, fuck, man. Yeah. Like, I, I know it must have been bad, but this is... I mean, this is terrible. Yeah. So to have, yeah, those little interspersed, it, it it helps the audience be able to sit there and appreciate this thing for its entire run. Yeah. Because if you don't have it, like it could be one of those movies that gets to the end and be like, okay, I saw that. Yeah. And it was too much to emotionally go through again. Well, and it's incredible when you watch these films that are done really well with Nazis. For whatever reason, Matt, Nazis are the ones that we use as a touchstone of evil to understand evil it's easy. from humanity. Like, how can human beings be this way like when you see this with uh with ray fines his struggle throughout the film he is a brutal man an oh, yeah. evil man and yet he has this possibility to be redeemed because schindler is such a charming man that he almost convinces him to change his way still thinking he's being this yeah. brutal evil person he's trying to appeal to him yeah to be like oh no true power yeah real power that's not everyone knows you have that power it's the restriction of that power that is true power. Yeah. You're like, man, this guy should, could have been a snake oil salesman. Yeah, well, he kind of was. He was. He was until he finally hit it off as, you know, the manufacturing. Yeah. But, 
It's pretty easy when you have slave labor. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. But he was saving all those Jews from mm -hmm. the gas chambers. from all. Yeah, ultimately, like it yeah. started off as just I'm greedy. Yes. And eventually seeing the error of his ways, um, making a choice. Which is a great work that Ben Kingsley does, uh, you know, as his assistant in the whole process. Bringing the like, right kind of committee touch, but also the right kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, gravitas in those moments when he's just like, the list is life. That's such a powerful moment. And then when he's trying to help them through these situations and help Oscar understand, and even Oscar at the end when he's breaking down and crying. About yeah, this the pin. Ring, or the pin, right? This pin. pin. Yeah, all of that. Just great performances all around. Man. Mm -hmm. And I love the ending of the, of the, of the movie and uh, where the actual Jewish people are putting the rocks Put on. Put the rocks on, yeah, to pay respects. Oh. Fantastic stuff, man. Such yeah. a good, good film. It really is. And it's, it is the rare, I can watch this. Mm. I will be able to watch this over and over and over again, and it will still have the same effect. I mean, not obviously it's the first time because there is the experience of seeing it for the first time. Yeah. But the resonance that it has and the lessons that's there to, inadvert I don't know if inadvertently teach. I'm sure he was over it because of the choices, obviously. But it's not... As though they're browbeating, they're just kind of saying, oh. "This is the story. Yeah, this is this is as best as I can tell it, and keep it, you know, so that you'll watch it because I can't go fully historically accurate in certain spots because there's no need to. We all know what's going on. Yeah, and the film maintains an incredible tension throughout, Matt, because mm -hmm. you have no idea what's going to happen. You don't know if if who if eventually when. the Nazis will figure out. Yeah, what he's doing. Yeah, because if you're not familiar with the story, you go through it, and and yeah. I don't know if people remember this, but like. When they screened it on NBC the first time, it was commercial free. No oh, yeah? And that's never done. Not for a movie that long. Yeah, exactly. And so it was pretty amazing they did that as a kind well, of a, a homage to the film. Was it sponsored by yes, anybody? Yes, well, it was sponsored, sure, sure. There you go. So they got theirs. It's crack. It is. <coughs> All right, man. All right. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> you can't just hold them up like all this magnanimous act. They, well, made, they made the choice. I was trying to, yeah. So they cut out three hours of time, had sponsors <laughs> open for like 10, 15 minutes as they set up, maybe brought somebody in, interviewed them, and yeah. now here's Schindler's List. I, I didn't <laughs> Here, see it. And I'm, now Schindler's List. Yeah, after 15, <laughs> you know, it's... It's whatever in the 50s, whatever tobacco company. Lucky Strikes bring oh. you the Benny Hill show. And you're like, okay. The Campbell Soup Hour. The Campbell uh -huh. Soup Hour. Yeah, All that, that stuff. <laughs> Move from radio onto TV early on. It's vaudeville, baby. I got to get paid. All right. Well, that's our that's our separate list. There it on is. That note. Didn't see it ending like that. Uh, Schindler's List definitely number one. Yes. Uh, so number two will be interesting. Um, it has well, to, I think it has to be Braveheart. I think because it's higher. Yeah. Yep. All right. You write it down. I'll bang. Yeah. Because it's my turn to bang. I okay. Believe. Hello. But I gotta move some crap. All right. So what's next? I have yeah. Spartacus at two. Where do you have that again? It's like I have it at eight. Uh, and we don't have anything that coincides. Hotel Rwanda. Oh, Hotel Rwanda. Next. But I'm happy to put Spartacus at three. Okay. Yeah, I can do Spartacus at three. I'm fine there. Because you have it so high. Does that mean then Rwanda needs to go next? Because we both have it next. Uh, in common, I mean. Because we don't have any other things in common. Does it feel like to put? Does it feel right to put it at four? I have it at four on my list. Oh, but you do. At the same time, like okay. I have Hacksaw Ridge above it, and it's not on the list yet. And I prefer that movie. You prefer Hacksaw because it made three on my list as opposed to oh, four. Oh, true. Uh, what do you have next? I have Argo next. Yeah, so, not on my list. Okay, so what number is that for you? I'm sorry. Number four. Oh, three, three. Argo is three. So let's uh, do, let's do Hacksaw Ridge. Okay, and you want to do Argo next? Uh, no, uh, Hotel Rwanda next, then Argo. Okay. Because, I mean, we should get the commonality one out of the way. And I had it at seven, so it's not that far off where you had it at four. So that seems like a common ground there. Uh, Argo mm -hmm. at six? Sure. Okay. And then what do you have? Uh, next, I have uh, Apollo 13. Ooh. And what do you have next? Gandhi. Okay, take Gandhi there. Yeah? Right. Yeah. I think I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. All right. So give me Apollo 13 next. And that's what? Eight? I don't know. You've got the list in front yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. Good call. I do have the list in front of me. Yeah, I've, I've told you I'm not writing it down. So I like that you're asking me, but like, Mom, it sounds right. You could have told me anything right there. Oh, that's all 10. Is that all 10? <laughs> that's that all 10. I don't know it is. Uh, you Gandhi just, all the way down. Three, three you put spots. in whatever two you wanted, and then I'm banging. I don't notice it. I'm like, hey, wait, wait a second. Rocky four. What? I don't remember that making the fucking list. <laughs> all right. Uh, you got two left? Yeah. What do you have? Lincoln is my next. All right, I respect your love of Lincoln, so I'll put that there. All right, then, so we'll, 
the imitation game I have next. All right, there we go. All that right. is full consolation That's, on both our parts. Tell uh, Jen uh, Jen Kemp. I can't say it right. Or Kristen Smith, rather. Kristen, Kristen Smith. Smith. How do you say Kempy's name? She, she, I think it's just Kemp. Is it Kemp? I believe it's Kemp. What's the E there for, then? Ugh. To throw you off. Why is the K in my last name silent? I don't know. Oh, good call. It's right, Germanic descent. So why did the Germans decide at one point? Is that a derivation of Latin that they only held on to? Ooh. Well, it's Latin derivative, as is English and Spanish and Italian and French. and. Yeah. You lost me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe they're all Latin derivative. Latin was the one of the bases, if not the base, of their th- those languages. Oh, okay. And then they sprouted off and went their own way. There you go. Thereafter, I believe, once again, Germanic probably existed before, considering the Romans came in there. There's like two people going, that's fucking bullshit, man. I hope uh, not. <laughs> uh, all right, so you ready? What do you call it? Top 10, what is it? Top 10 movies with real-life heroes or top 10 real-life hero movies? What do you want to say? Surprise me on the falsetto, and then oh. I'll start banging. You got your choice ready? Lock it in, Johnny. What do you got? He's he's not sure. He's holding on, guys. I'm giving you play by play. Okay, let's do it. All right. He's got it. Here we go. Are we ready? Let's do it. The top ten real life hero movies. Yeah. At number ten, The Imitation Game. At number nine, Lincoln. At number seven. What number? Number eight. I'm number eight. <laughs> Apollo thirteen. All the blood is rushing to my head as I'm bent over to do this. <laughs> So you're saying seven comes after yeah, eight? Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> At number seven. Gandhi. At number six. Argo. In the five spot. Hotel Rwanda. At number four. Hacksaw Ridge. Rounding our top three is... I'm Spartacus. In the two spot. Braveheart. And finally, our number one. Schindler's List. There it is. There it is. That's a good list. It's an excellent list. A lot of fantastic films. If you haven't seen any of these films, or at least some of these films, watch them, for God's sakes. What is wrong with you? Get on it. What else you got? Oh, what were my other ones? Rifle through your honorable mention. Oh, I got so many. I, I only have bad. two, so you can... Uh, I have Dallas Buyers Club and Sully. Okay. That was it. That's all I had uh, other than that. What did you have? Interesting. Both not on my side list. Ooh. And I have so many movies. I think because this... The thing is, people listening will be like, well, how did you forget about this? Like, this is a big topic. Yeah, it is a big topic. You can choose, and you can define hero however you want to. Right. Dude, so many. It's a matter right. of, of of what we're talking about. Malcolm X. Yeah, I wanted to put Malcolm X. Amistad. Um, mm-hmm. The Way Back. Um, 127 Hours. Okay. But just because he's heroic, it's lifting the, like, to see him. I, I saw the Letterman interview first. Oh, yeah, okay. And fair. then I saw the movies, but it's just like, wow, this guy did what? Yeah. And then you see it? Yeah. Uh, I'll do the others quickly. Um, My Left Foot, Captain Phillips, Serpico, uh, All the President's Men, yeah. possibly. The Right Stuff, 12 Years a Slave, Mississippi Burning, Lion, Pianist, Milk, Rescue Dawn. These are great choices. Yeah, they all f- 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 failed to meet whatever metric yep. I created. Yep. Personally, that's just me personally. No, no. Malcolm X was something I really, really considered, but I thought Selma was a little more because there's a lot of controversy around Malcolm. So I couldn't 100% put it on there. Although a lot of black people do see him as a hero. So I just, I love Malcolm X to pieces. He is more my type of person that I admire. But in the long run, I thought the Selma situation was better overall. So that's why. I made yeah, it. I think it was a more effective strategy. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. All right, well, that's our list. There we go. Uh, top 10 real-life hero movies. Done and done. I hope we uplifted you. Yes. After depressing you for the last few weeks. Ho- hopefully a little bit. Please go out there and watch <laughs> something and be inspired. Um, so uh, for everybody listening, obviously, already knows, we have a Patreon page up. We it's do. Patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. Yes. Um, so if you want to support us there, um, please feel free. We're not going to start any of it until you guys actually get charged something. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, we'll think of things that yeah. we're going to do once you get charged. Exactly. That's what we're doing now is taking that time to go, hey, what about this idea? Just kind of bat some things around. So yeah. at least once it rolls out, you're getting something for your dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the shows, but also like we'll try and jazz it up and do a few little things here. And we'll take chances. Yeah. And um, and the truth is, the more, the more you donate, and I don't mean this in a way like I want you to donate more. This idea is you are supporting the show. Even if it's $1 a month, and you're only getting charged once a month, even if it's $1 a month, there's like 30,000 listeners. $1. It's like, that yeah, that's helps. on a bad week. It's not, yeah, and so that, that helps us 
Like get studio time helps us get this situation get more. And so the more we can do the stuff you enjoy doing, even if it's a dollar a month, twelve dollars a year, like it's it's not asking what. And if you can't, we totally understand. No one's judging. Yeah, a bunch of people said, you know what, I'm just not in a place where I can do it. Not a problem. Not a problem. And not a we problem. Understand. And and but Matt and I created these all these multiple tiers because people were saying. They wanted to contribute, so we wanted to make it as easy as possible. You contribute as little as you yeah. want or as much as you want. Do as much as you like. Right, exactly. And, and we have no judgment here on this side of the fence. Yeah, and also we'll, uh, we've floated ideas between us, so we may in the future like add something to a tier. Hey, we're going to throw this in with this too yeah. since you're already paying for this. Just try and basically make it more value added for you. Yeah. So it's that'll take time to build. For the time being, Like the stuff we're going to add is just fun little bells and whistles, like little things here and there, and try and figure out what you want mm -hmm. and what we can give you. Yeah, and another idea, I had, and I'm actually bringing Matt and I have not discussed this. I want to bring it up now kind of impromptu is... Be you sure about that? Yeah. Be sure about that? <laughs> Dude, this, I think we should, do, we should consider doing a live Top 10 show. I think between us, we have enough friends, enough fans around the area... Who would pay to come see us do a live top ten show? And that might be part of the the Patreon situation. You know, like some lucky fan gets to come in and sit front row and you know help us with the thing. We could get Cody to do the whiteboard on stage. So oh, they, they, uh, we'll, we'll get, get Cody you. there. Yeah, we'll get Adam off to the side, just sitting there for no need. You'll run the whole production thing of it. You know, sure, that'd be perfect. It so, would be perfect. I don't you think? Like it would be a fun a live event. Like there's, I'm sure there's a venue around town, one of the comedy clubs or whatever. We could do one night. Have people come and watch us do the top ten show live, which would be a blast. Sure, there's you know? a ton of small theaters, small yeah, small rooms that we could easily do. We could have special guests. There's all kinds of things that could happen. Possibilities. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I have zero uh, problem with that whatsoever. Great. great. A friend of mine brought it up last night. He's like, "You guys should do it live. It's such a great show. You guys should do it live. People would love it." I was like, "Oh, I hadn't thought about it in a while. It might, it might be fun." So, well, I'll tell your friend, uh, thank you for the idea, and <laughs> we'll take. We'll take a dollar off his admission. Sure. You know what I mean? No sure. comps. No no comps. Oh, you pay to play. <laughs> yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> Just going down. And interestingly, we're charging $100 a ticket. So, guys, get on board <laughs> for a commodity you've never seen live. <laughs> Please. We'll do a good show live. It, oh, it I won't have, be boring. Yeah, anymore. no concern with that. But I'm just thinking, like, t the cheapest concert ticket you're going to get, like, these oh, days is right. now 100 bucks, And it's yeah. just like, I, I don't even, I, I kind of know you. Yeah. Like, I get it. Album sales aren't what they used to, so they need to charge more there because they make their money now on the road. Like, right. that's fine. Well, depending on the venue, we'll adjust the ticket price. Like, 20 bucks, 10 bucks, depending on the venue. Sure. Yeah, we could figure it out. It would just be fun to try it out. So, we'll see. Well, it's there's something, there's definitely ideas for this kind of stuff. And, and I'm sure there are people that we know that can give us huge discounts on the venue so that we will be able to do it and make some kind of profit off it, which would be fun. So, that's a blast. Uh, anything else you want to say? Um, no, um, I will try and get the, uh, Patreon link cause, uh, somebody tweeted me or something saying it should be in the YouTube description. Oh, good call. So I'll, I'll try and if, you, if you're watching on YouTube and you want to click it there, go ahead. But if yeah. you need to find it, you can find it on our Facebook page or uh, on Twitter, find us on Twitter. Yeah. And we both got, I know I've got the, the tweet pinned to the top. Yes. And honestly, so do I, the benchmark I want to hit next is we're like almost at a hundred patrons wow so i i just want to see it at 100 sure because we're not that far we're not even two weeks in and yeah. we're almost at 100 already and be like wow i didn't i knew that there were people that would support us wow and try and yeah. realize you know this and the fact that shit and whatever it's been nine ten days or whatever the case is uh we've gotten that many already it's like wow, you know blown away so I thank want, you i want twenty thousand, but i hear you 100 is fine Oh yeah, well, baby steps, man. <laughs> baby steps. I'm a big, I'm a big picture kind of guy. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but no, listen. Thanks to everyone who's been listening and commenting and tweeting at us, and of course, you know, uh, telling other people about us. Like we, those tweets have mm -hmm. been increasing. Where you've been telling your friends about us, like calling us your favorite uh, podcast, which we really appreciate. Uh, and all the work that Chris Alexakos has done, all the work that Kristen Smith is doing, everybody who's commenting. And we're going to change the Facebook page into a group page so that people can yeah, hopefully comments yeah. and stuff By the like time that. you you hear this on Tuesday, it will have already been done, but it should yeah. be done during this week. Yes. Yes. Um, it's and just the next thing. But it, just, it seems like something where we you guys can create the community you want to see. Yep. Because uh, it's too, uh, we don't have enough time to, to post as often and to spark as much debate as you're capable of doing on your own. Right. And I'd like to be part of that discussion. Yeah. So it seems like the best route to go, the most efficient, where everybody's happiest. And our fans, if not, if, uh, are quite interactive, if nothing else. So mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be to open Which I up love. 
Yeah, absolutely. To open up a group page, and we can all interact with each other and have a good time, like uh, talking about or debating yeah. numbers or, or movies that were were, were not included. So, uh, so and, and you're listening to us on the SK Plus podcast channel. Thanks so much for downloading the show. Please uh, listen to the other shows as well. Download them. You know, leave them comments. Leave us comments. Uh, a number of shows there. The uh, After Schmo Show. Uh, Outlaw Nation, Shmodown Rundown, Wangers, Wangers, The show. Meaning of, The Meaning of, which is a new show that I'm enjoying from uh, Ace and RB3, I think, and uh, Beardo, Don't Be a Beardo, Don't Be a Beardo, which you had a great interview on as well. So, such did a you fun listen to that. Of you course, I did. You haven't heard me talk enough, so you tuned in to listen to me talk some more. <laughs> well, let's get to know you. It's nothing wrong with listening. Okay, but I can't imagine you gleaned anything that you didn't already know, but I appreciate it. No, it was just I wanted to see if there was something I didn't know because uh, Brian can be surprising with his questions sometimes. He got two and a half hours out of me. I'm sure you haven't listened to that, but he got two and a half hours out of me. It was intense. I, I didn't know that he that he had. I yeah. I podcasts I listen to are basketball slash sports and then uh, history, and that's what I listen to. Ooh. It might be time for us to do a season preview on the Outlaw Nation. I think it might be time. Well, the season begins tonight. Son of a bitch! When they hear Wait, this. Tonight? Oh, when they hear this. Season begins tonight. Is it a Tuesday night that it begins? I believe it is a Tuesday night. Fuck. I can't right. watch the games either. That Cleveland Celtics game is going to be really interesting. If if LeBron shows up, he keeps saying he might, might miss the season opener. That'd be LeBron to miss the season opener against Kyrie. There's a lot of CJ McCollum is now out for the season opener. What? He got into, he left the bench oh. on some sort of altercation. I haven't seen it yet. Jesus, CJ. So he's out game one. Somebody else is out game one, too. Was it Kawhi? Is it's Kawhi be, out game yeah, one? Yeah, Kawhi's out. Yeah. This is going to be a fun season, dude. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anyway, all right. Wish I was a Warriors fan. <laughs> I wish I was a Thunder fan. Uh, all right, thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will talk to you all next time on the Top 10 Show.